Hey everybody, Isotope released a new plugin this week called VIA. That's an abbreviation for Voice Enhancement Assistant. It's a $29 plugin that is entering a space with heavy competition already. I've been thinking to myself that Isotope, they need to do something to compete with these newer noise and reverb reduction plugins. Let's take a look at it and see how well it competes. So here's the website for VIA, the Voice Enhancement Assistant. It has a 10-day free trial. Enjoy the sound of your own voice. VIA is an AI audio enhancer that takes any voice recording and makes it more powerful, more polished, and more professional. This easy-to-use tool is perfect for podcasters and content creators of all skill sets, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro. VIA features, built with industry-leading audio enhancement technology from RX, Ozone, and Nectar, VIA increases clarity, sets more consistent levels, and reduces background noise. This is what it looks like. You've got the three controls, shape, which polishes your voice, VIA's shape control is tailored to your voice, instantly making you sound more polished and professional. No more playing with equalizers or surfing presets to improve your voice mixing, whether you're narrating a video or hosting an interview on your own podcast. VIA ensures your voice sounds audience-ready in seconds. Boost. Be heard. Easily add presence and power to your voice with Boost. VIA takes the guesswork out of voice mixing. Don't worry about understanding compression and limiting. Just focus on sounding your best. For content producers, this means getting an even sound for your vlogs and tutorials to create a smoother and more engaging experience for your audience. Clean. Turn down the noise. VIA features essential noise reduction software that trims noise while leaving your voice sounding great. The clean control helps denoise your audio, taking background noise out of the spotlight so your voice can shine. Recording a vlog under the AC, taking a virtual interview with signal interference, it's no problem with VIA. And it includes audio lens. Reference any voice. Match the sound of your favorite creator or podcast with intuitive audio lens referencing as part of the shape control. Just add your target audio from any source, and audio lens will help you visualize, compare, and replicate. Just right off the bat, I can tell you the audio lens thing, that's just marketing. You can't match your voice to someone else's. If I try to match my voice to James Earl Jones, it's not going to sound right on my voice. When we're doing EQ, we shouldn't be changing our voice. But that's getting a little off topic. Let's hear how this actually sounds. So here we are in Hindenburg. Let's start by loading the plugin. Once we load the plugin, the first thing we have to do is to play some audio for it to analyze. We'll do that now. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, it takes, it needs about five to 10 seconds of audio before it can start to do its magic. So here we are with the its suggestions. We've got clean at 47.8%, shape and boost, or shape and booster at 50%. One of the first things I notice is when after it applies its settings, it adds a huge amount of volume to it, making it very difficult to get a true A-B comparison. 
So once we get done here, what I'll do is I'll play the clips back, uh, the comparison clips all level matched so we can really compare everything. But let's take a look at how everything works. Let's bypass this real quick so we can hear what the original sounded like. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile. So I feel like that's doing a much better job on the noise reduction. Since it's adding so much volume, it's hard for me to gauge if we need to make any adjustments to shape or boost. So let's do some A-B comparisons. Now we're going to do the A-B tests. First up is the raw audio. We've got three plugins I'm comparing via against. We've got Supertone Clear, and for these I did turn off the reverb reduction to make it a little more of a fair comparison. We've got Cedar Audio's Voice X, that does noise reduction and reverb reduction in one, so I couldn't turn off the reverb reduction. And we have a Sentai's DX Revive. DX Revive does the most out of these, I think. It does noise and reverb reduction. It does some EQ and some spectral balancing or something along those lines. Not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but these are probably the three main competitors to VIA on the market right now. These are all level matched, so we know they're going to be the same volume. We're not being biased by one being louder than another. So let's take a listen to each one. We'll start with the raw audio. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, we're short on energy. And then we start taking certain supplies offline and then signaling you don't want certain supplies because of the emissions factor. You then create a consequence of you're not gonna have a reliable energy system. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, we're short on energy. And then we start taking certain supplies offline and then signaling you don't want certain supplies because of the emissions factor. You then create a consequence of you're not gonna have a reliable energy system. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, we're short on energy. And then we start taking certain supplies offline and then signaling you don't want certain supplies because of the emissions factor. You then create a consequence of you're not gonna have a reliable energy system. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, we're short on energy. And then we start taking certain supplies offline and then signaling you don't want certain supplies because of the emissions factor. You then create a consequence of you're not gonna have a reliable energy system. And this is where it gets really fascinating because the energy system <clears throat> requires all sources of energy. And if you look at the energy demand and the profile, we're short on energy. And then we start taking certain supplies offline and then signaling you don't want certain supplies because of the emissions factor. You then create a consequence of you're not gonna have a reliable energy system. So how did VIA sound to you in this comparison? To me, it sounded fairly close to clear I think the average listener wouldn't hear the difference. The biggest thing, biggest difference I hear between the two is via, I can hear the gating a lot more noticeably. It's still subtle, but I can pick up on it. Whereas clear seems to be much more natural in the way it applies the noise reduction. I didn't hear much of a difference in terms of the tone or the compression. So I'm not really hearing via doing anything that I can't already do with clear. When we got to the clip with voice X, you could hear immediately 
the reverb reduction. And that, to me, makes a bigger noticeable difference. It makes voice sex sound better than clear or via in this comparison. And with DX Revive, like I said in my review of it, I'm not the biggest fan of the EQ on it. To me, it changes the sound too much from the presenter's voice. So let's move over to our next example. And we'll just go through these back to back. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing. Uh, I got in, I mean, I've been a musician for uh, a really long time. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing. Uh, I got in, I mean, I've been a musician for uh, a really long time. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing. Uh, I got in, I mean, I've been a musician for uh, a really long time. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing. Uh, I got in, I mean, I've been a musician for uh, a really long time. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the background is basically uh, probably similar to a lot of people who are doing audio editing. Uh, I got in, I've mean, been a musician for a really long time. On this one, Via is, it's just not able to get all of that noise. I'm not hearing much of a difference between the raw audio and the Via processed audio. Clear wasn't much better. It still really struggled with that noise. VoiceX and DX Revive were remarkably close to each other. Either one of those would be the clear winner in this comparison. If you've watched any of my noise reduction videos, you know what this next clip is. No, I think it's, no, well, I think you hear it, but in the congressional side, I mean, I think the administration has been strangely silent about it. I mean, it's very important in our relationship with India, but they don't really talk about it. They just want to talk about, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is, this is very important. And, you know, I, I could see at our conference in India, they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it, no, I think it's no. Well, I think you hear it. But in the congressional side, I mean, I think the administration has been strangely silent about it. I mean, it's very important in our relationship with India, but they don't really talk about it. They just want to talk about, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is, this is very important. And, you know, I, I could see at our conference in India, they were surprised. Not They heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it, No, I think it's, no, well, I think you hear it, but in the congressional side, I mean, I think the administration has been strangely silent about it. I mean, it's very important in our relationship with India, but they don't really talk about it. They just want to talk about, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is, this is very important. And, you know, I, I could see at our conference in India, they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it... no, I think it's no. Well, I think you hear it, but in the congressional side, I mean, I think the administration has been strangely silent about it. I mean, it's very important in our relationship with India, but they don't really talk about it. They just want to talk about, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is. This is very important and, 
you know, I, I could see at our conference in India, they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it... no, I think it's no. Well, I think you hear it, but in the congressional side, I mean, I think the administration has been strangely silent about it. I mean, it's very important in our relationship with India, but they don't really talk about it. They just want to talk about, you know, net zero carbon. And I think for the Indians, this is this is very important. And, you know, I, I could see at our conference in India, they were surprised. Not they heard about it from the U.S. companies, but they didn't hear about it from the U.S. government. And it... I think in this comparison, it's very similar to the previous one. Via really struggled with the noise, especially when the fan started to ramp up. Clear didn't do that much better. VoiceX and DX Revive did much better consistently throughout the noise. You could hear the resonance when the fan started to pick up. But the big difference to me is how natural VoiceX sounds, how true it sounds to the original voice. Whereas D DX Revive is again showing that heavy handed EQ that changes the voice a little too much for my liking. Overall, I had to look at the calendar to make sure that it's not April 1st, because really, I expected more from Isotope. I get that this is a $29 plugin, but to me, it's not even worth that. I feel like they're trying to use loudness to make it seem like this sounds better than it does. I noticed on their website that their before and after clips weren't gain matched, which to me is always a red flag. Come on, Isotope, really? That's the best you could do in plugin form? I've been thinking to myself that Isotope has been coasting for too long in the noise and reverb reduction race that they've watched the competition pass them by. Now I want to ask, what do you think? Is VIA a plugin you see worth adding to your toolbox? Would it make your life better? Is it even worth the $29 price tag? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you next time.